Hey guys, Basil Wolf from Grayson Hobby, and in this video we are going to do a tutorial. We are going to show you how to hook up your QX7 to your new ET125 ET or 115. Now this is a new radio and that's a new quad, right? Does that matter? Well, this one's not, but this one is. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically starting with the factory setup and we're going to show you guys how to get it going without, well, two different methods. A quick start without setting up on the computer. Nobody flight. And for those that you do run into any snags or anything like that, we'll also show the what to check for in beta flight. Hopefully this will get you guys going because we do have people asking that. It's apparently a very popular quad. Yes, it, this is didn't know how to set up. That is the probably the best beginner quad that we've we have. So here's the video on how to hook up the radio to your quad. Now let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna put our six AA batteries in. Not included. So what we gotta do, and I guess probably just overhead for the rest of this. We're gonna turn it on. Now this is before we can get the quad going, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do a preset up on this, ignore, cancel all those little warnings it might have because the switches are down, stuff like that. Um, typically you want to go through and calibrate the sticks and all that. They should have been done from the factory. You can always go back and do that if you have to. But hit this, me uh, this menu button right here. We're just going to tap it. So you're going to see one of 12. So this is the first model. We're going to skip the naming part and all that for now. So what we're just going to do is hit the page button. We're gonna go to the second page. By hitting the page button, correct? By hitting the page button. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to where you should see. All right, so internal RF is D16. And you notice it says channel one through 16. Do not set it to that eight on the King Kongs. The receiver goes weird. The factory flash on the receiver doesn't like that. Um, so leave it on the 16. That's the receiver number. You'll end up binding there. But for now, we're just going to set up the radio first. So we're going to skip that. So I'm going to go to the third page. This is heli. We're not using a heli, but this is a default radio. Um, flight modes we're not going to use. Inputs, we can skip inputs as well. Um, literally, we're just going to go straight to the fourth page or sixth page, which is the mixer. And if you're going to run the King Kong without making any changes, we do actually have to change this a little bit. So you're going to hold the right button here, go to edit. Then you're going to change throttle and you're gonna do, it's aileron is the default, so all you gotta do is move the aileron stick while it's flashing. Hit exit, hit exit again, and now we're gonna go back out. Now we gotta go to the second one. And for then, channel two, right? for channel two, so you see mixer channel two. Now we're gonna change that to elevator. All right, and then the third one, we're gonna change that to throttle. Now th this is a mode two radio, right? This is a mode two radio, yeah. Throttles on the left stick. Okay. So this will give us a default. Um, if you don't want to change that, if you want to leave it as the JR mapping, which is what I used in the video, um, you would leave this and you change it in beta flight. But for the for sake of trying to get this quad flying without hooking into beta flight, this is what we're gonna do. Okay. All right. So and then the next, uh, we're gonna go to channel five and then gonna go into that and you can let's see what I did here. Uh, let's see. I just. Hold it, and it'll say edit. Um, now we're going to select the source. Channel 5 is going to be your arming switch. Okay. Um, so you're going to select it to highlight. And I'm just going to use this one. I yeah. prefer to use this switch in the top left corner. Um, you can use other switches, but most of them are three position. This is a toggle. Um, so you need at least a two position switch to do right. arming. So we'll, we'll do that one. So I'm going to do switch F on that, and I'm going to cancel out of there. And then channel 6. I'm going to assign, I like my flight mode switch on this one, you can use, again, you can assign to whichever one you want, just remember which one it is. But I like to use this switch right here. The bigger, taller one, right? Yeah, I like right. that because it's easier to get and to. That's what we'll do. All right. All right. So now you'll see it says switch B because this is A, B, C, D. All right. So now we've got switch B. I'm going to hit there. I'm going to exit out of that. Now if you want to go down and add an optional buzzer, it doesn't come set up in the file. But uh, channel seven, I'm going to flip that to the other tall switch here, which is switch C. Okay, so a buzzer is where if, you, if you've lost it. Yeah, that's like the lost, uh, lost lost plane finder, lost quad right, finder. Okay. Whatever. All right, so that's all the switches we really need so, on this model. So it's one through seven. Yeah, one through seven. Um, there's really only seven functions that you can use. I mean, if you yeah. wanted turtle mode, stuff like that down the yep. road, you can do that. We're not doing that. The next thing we're going to do is outputs. Now, um, you could, because what happens default here is... I don't know exactly why I couldn't answer that, but for some reason, 100% throw on the Tyrannus radio when using the XM, XM pluses and all that, um, it gives it more than 1,000, 2,000 on beta flight. So you have two options. You can either do it the, the lazy way and change the 100% endpoints to 97%. On the radio? On the radio, or you can do it the better way. I, I tend to do it this next way. Um, so I'm gonna go to page seven of 12. 
And this takes longer, but unfortunately, it's the way to do it. I go to edit, and then I'm gonna set it to negative 97.7 there. That's for the minimum. For the maximum, I'm gonna change it to 97.7. And so far, every quad I've had that uses a true free sky receiver, 97, negative 97.7 and positive 97.7 has been 1,000, 2,000 on the end. Right, so this is just one way, but there's multiple yeah. ways to do this, right? Yeah, this is, if you wanna get going, you wanna make it make sure it works on it, yeah. this should get you 99% in the ballpark All right. there. All right, so we're gonna go through, go to the next channel. And if, you're fa if you want to be fancy, hook it up to the computer, you can do this a lot quicker. But again, we're trying to do this without using the computer here as much as possible. Because we all know everyone's computers are different. Drivers are terrible. Yeah, I cannot help you on your Windows, Linux, or Mac computer. I'm, I'm not Windows, or I'm not Geek Squad. I'm just Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> and you're seeing all I'm doing is going through and I'm editing your each mins one. and maxes on each of the four channels, right? Yeah. Now, do you need to do the other channels, the buzzer and the flip switch and like the arm, this arm? Um, technically, yes, but I usually end up being lazy on that one. Because that's a range. That's really, that's a range. It's not yeah, but you don't, you want to keep everything within 1,000, 2,000, so okay. it's best to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right. Um, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. All right, so I got my seven channels set up there. So they're all negative 97.7 and they're all positive yeah. 97.7. And then now... And then if you want to go in and name it here, um, if you do want to add a timer, hold the menu button, or I'm sorry, tap the menu button, go to page two, you can go to timer, say you want it to be on um, throttle, throttle position. Usually throttle 20% or something like that. Yeah, I usually do a throttle percentage as well. Right. Um, but say you want to set like a three minute timer or something right. like that. Um, the throttle percent, I don't think it gives you an option. Okay. Uh, you could do throttle start. Like as soon as you start the stick, it'll do it. Gotcha. I usually do the throttle percent. Yeah. Though. Now keep um, in mind, it does have a buzzer, built-in buzzer, so you probably don't have to do yeah, that. Yeah, you need to view, um, let's go in here. You set the flight. So that's gonna give you the percentage there. So if you're flying, with once the throttle goes up, it'll go down and then it'll stop the timer on you. Throw do it again. Throttle up. Yep. Timer okay. starts going. So, All right, so, so that's pretty much. So that's it everything on the radio part that's gonna get you flying there. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take the top off one of these uh, ET125. So we're buying right. now. So what we're gonna do now is we got to take, we took the top off of the three screws at the bottom. So there's the three screws, covers off, and I'm gonna just kind of push that through a little bit there so I got room to work with. Now this is the fun part. This is where if you have a helper it would be nice, but instead I got a guy hold. Um, basically there's a little button and I'll show you guys before I plug anything in. There's right, if you see there, there's the three wires, there's two LEDs. So that's, that's the receiver you're touching to. This is the receiver. Yeah. Um, right here in this corner is the bind button, and that's the antenna uh, base. So what we need to do is push the bind button. And it's really, really, really small. Yeah, it doesn't take much to push it. So you're holding the button in and you're powering up at the same time. And then I plug in the battery, and you'll see both lights light up. On the receiver. On the receiver. So you see a red and a green. If you only see a slow flashing red, then it's not in bind mode. Okay. So now what do we gotta do? Just plugged in, we're still in quote unquote bind mode. Yeah. And all right, come to the radio. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to bind on page two. And this is where you want somebody probably securing the quad or something like that, or turn upside down, whatever you gotta do. Um, we're gonna bind it there. So you hit the enter. flashing there. And this you'll hear the radio. And then you'll see. Instantaneously, that will start flashing, right? Yeah. All right, so then you stop the bind. How do you do that? I've just it. push it again. Okay. And then unplug your battery. Up your quad. What I do is I plug it back in. And then you'll see the green dim light. On the receiver. Not, I'm just going to push the bind button again, okay. and that just sets the fail safe on the receiver okay. to low and disarmed and everything. Gotcha. So you hit the bind button again. Yeah, after it's after been powered you, up. Okay. It'll fly, I'll, here, I'll show you. So if I push it, flashes twice. Oh, yeah, okay. Nah. So it's hard to focus, but we're not looking at these lights here. We're looking yeah, you're at, looking at, the, you're looking at the, the one on there. Right. Okay. The receiver. That one. Yep. All right. So that's pretty much all you need to get it going. So I'm going to put the top back on. All right. Partially. I'm not going to screw it down, but so let me put it so I can show point, you the motors. Are we ready to fly? This would fly at this point. So we got the cover all right. on. So now from there, we plug in the quad. And I'm going to show you guys. This is the, here are the beeping. So now it's ready to arm. If I flip that switch, the arming switch, okay, that's this one that I set, uh -huh. the motors are spinning. 
Now, from the factory, motor stop is off, so no matter what mode you're in, the props are gonna spin. Um, the second is her, uh, the first mode is gonna be your angle mode. That's all the way away from you. All the way up. Okay. The second mode is gonna be horizon. That's the middle. And the third mode is gonna be acro. So you got arming. So once you turn it on, once you arm angle, it, the motor's just that's start, horizon, start spinning, right? And that's acro. The one way to know that you're an acro, you can actually hear the motors. Just slow down a little. Once you arm it, they automatically start spinning, correct? Yeah. So when you arm it, you make sure you're ready to fly, make sure you're outside or... Yeah, on the default setup. Right. Now this is the basic. This is the, I don't wanna hook it to the computer, but I do wanna fly it. I'm completely illiterate with computers. That's that's oh, the solution for that, right. okay? So that is a way to get it going without the computer. Ideally, yes, you do wanna hook it to the computer, but it's one of the things, this thing's set up enough to where you don't have to. Gotcha. That was the whole point. All right, so that's your basics there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we did set this switch for a beeper, but as you notice, it's not doing the beeper. Out of the box, these don't have a beeper on a switch. It's only set when the battery gets low to start beeping. So what we're gonna do is actually hook this to beta flight and I'll show you guys how to turn on the beeper. Again, we're gonna have to take the top back off at least enough to get to the USB port. You gotta be careful, make sure you use a data USB cable. It does come with one. Um, you'll see the lights flash and then you'll have the slow flashing green, stuff like that, depending on what it's saying. Okay. Computer will make a beeping sound. So there's no battery in this guy, right? But flight pack's not in there. It's just hooked up. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. All right, so typically it'll, it'll be installing a driver. If, if it's the first time connecting a computer, it'll take a minute. Um, I got lucky this one actually already had the COM port, I guess, installed. Once the COM port loads there, you'll hit connect. All right, so um, let's check what I was telling you on the configuration. So out of the box, the motor stop is not enabled. If you do not want the motors to spin when you arm the switch, you would turn that on. Um, what do you prefer? I like using motor stop on the first two modes because okay. um, I enable air mode. So if it's if this was my quad, I would turn this on right here. Okay. I would scroll down and I would check, let's see. So air mode is actually not on in this quad out of the box. So that flew very good for air mode not being on. Um, I would turn air mode on a switch. I wouldn't necessarily have that on all the time um, because I'm using the motor stop. So what I'm actually gonna do is that one right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm using Betaflight 10.2.0 at today's date. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna save and reboot. Because when you change pages, you need to save before going to the next page. Go back to configure and check it. That's yeah. what I always do. Yeah. So go back. Make and this sure. is the motor stop here. Yeah, and sure. if you guys watched our last video when we were talking about the beeper, this is where on the configuration page, the VBAT, um, that's the that's the beeper for the battery when the battery starts getting low. That tells you that we'll um, Default's 3.5 volts. If you find that you feel like you're landing too early, like you still have plenty of juice, your battery's, only, you know, your charger's telling you to only put 300 milliamps back into 500. Um, you could lower that right there if you want. I think 3.3 is probably. Um, yeah, 3.4, 3.3 is usually what I leave it at. Um, but the factory, you might as well leave it there. Pid tuning, we're gonna leave that page alone. There's really nothing to do on that unless you wanna change your rates, but that's- We're not gonna touch Yeah, that we're now. not going with that. Um, this was that channel mapping I was speaking of earlier. So if you guys wanted to not change the order on the mixer page to leave it default, um, apparently the QX7 ships in a spectrum format, not the, um, the default like Fataba style that the old X9Ds did. I don't know if that's something they changed in OpenTX or not, I'm not sure. I've set mine up once and I've never looked back. Um, however, what I would say is your channel mapping, if you leave it default, um, the low stick threshold, that's 1100. I usually set that to about 1050 or so. Um, the lower you go, probably the better, but if you go too low, the stick, the, the quad won't arm. So I would change that to that, and then I would change the dead band. I would just add like two points of dead band on both of them. Um, it just, in case you have any twitching on the on the receiver tab or anything like that. Okay. Um, so you're gonna save that. So we're gonna go into the buzzer part. Okay. So this is the next page here. All right, so on the modes page, this is where we have to be careful, guys. This is where accidents happen because we have the battery connected to see the modes because the receiver doesn't power by the thing, uh, by the uh, USB. So, what we have to do is secure the quad, um, have either someone hold it, secure it, whatever you gotta do. Or take do. the props off. Take the props off would be the best thing to do, yes. So realistically guys, take your props off. If you're at this point where you're setting up the computer, take your props off. That is the number one thing to do. Um, I'm gonna tell you to take the props off, but I'm not gonna do it in this case. Um, Cause we're experts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, all right, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I'm gonna show you here is, if you look at the, the page here, when I flip the si switch, you'll see it move, all right? So say this quad was upside down, and it's not, it should not allow me to arm. 
The reason being the factory default has a uh, minimum, a maximum angle which in which it can arm. Now there are other settings that you could change to disable that, etc. Um, from the factory, it is enabled. Um, so be careful with that. Don't just assume it's going to do that. But um, you'll see here if I move the arming switch and that didn't turn yellow, it's not going to arm. Um, but again, always take your props off for safety. In this case, I'm just going to leave it upside down for the time being um, because it's not going to arm on me. But the second switch here, you'll see angle is the, uh, the high switch. And if I move the switch, you'll see it move to horizon. So you'll see the switch is moving. Um, the little tab is moving with the switch. Now, a lot of people ask me, where is acro mode? Where, you know, where is it? Well, when angle and horizon are turned off, acro is on. Okay, so this is actually in acro mode right now, even though nothing is lit up yellow saying acro. So acro and air mode are two Yeah, if things. you did not have angle or horizon modes there, it would be permanently in acro. Um, now, I am gonna turn on air mode here. Um, I just like the way it flies with air mode. So what I'm gonna do here is all I'm gonna do is hit uh, add range, and then I'm gonna flick the switch that I wanna use, and that's my flight mode switch. And you'll notice it auto configured to aux to, if you have to manually select it, then select it. All you gotta do is click it there. So it's gonna be the same as angle mode. Yeah. And but what mode. you'll see is the auxiliary. It still hasn't changed yeah. color yet. What I still want to do is I want air mode to be active only in horizon and acro. So I'm gonna click that little bar, this little uh, white bar, and slide it all the way over. And then I want to hit save. So what happens now is if I flip the switch, air mode turns on with horizon and air modes on by itself in acro. All right, so that sets up three flight modes like we do with our wizards and stuff like that. All right, then the last thing I wanna do is set up a beeper. This is the lost model finder. Um, that was switch C that we set up earlier. So all I'm gonna do is flip that. Aux three came up. So that is aux three on here or channel seven. And I'm gonna move the slider over there and there's the beeper. There. So that's the sound you, you also hear when you're... Um, now make sure you hit save as well. Yeah. So that's also if you can't find it. Yeah, so say you crash in the grass, the battery's connected, and you're like, I have no idea where this thing is. You can hit the beeper switch. Yep. All right, guys, that's it. Let us know what you think. Keep the comments flowing over here. Let us know um, what we missed, what you want to see in the next video. Again, remember, this is for the QX7. Tyrannus. ET-115 ET or 125? ET-115 right. or 125? Right, before we finish this closing, we'll let you know, this is just one way how to do this. I'm sure there's multiple ways how to do this, right? With Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways. Yeah. This is just a simple, um, without going into too much detail, just a quick get you in the air flying. Honestly, the Betaflight Wiki, Google, um, the OpenTX University, stuff like that, those are great resources if you want to get really in depth. Um, I do encourage anybody to start reading about Betaflight stuff, reading about OpenTX and all that. There's a lot of great features that's almost impossible to explain everything in these short videos um, without just confusing everyone because you're jumping from spot to spot. So I do encourage everyone to start looking at that kind of stuff if you want to know more. But if you just want a basic setup, hopefully this tutorial did what you needed. But the good thing is, is you don't even need to know that stuff to fly this guy. You don't. You don't need to know it. But I suggest you learn it. Wow.